name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about problem set 2 of CS50 Introduction to Programming with Python called Just Setting Up My Twitter. So if you have any question about programming or your career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link is in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already finished the assignment and want to have an alternative view about the solution. We totally disencourage plagiarism, alright? So this problem 3 here of the problem set 2, we're going to check, we're going to receive from the user an input, all right? For example, here we're going to receive Twitter and we have to output the same string, the same text, but without all the vowels, all right? So we have to remove the letter A, E, I, O and U, okay? So basically this is what we're going to do, all right? I already did here the pseudocode, all right? So we have to get the user input, then we're going to out, we're going to print the output here, this beginning output colon. Then we're gonna loop through every letter in our string and we're gonna check if it's A, E, I, O, or U, all right? And if not, we're gonna print the letter. And if it is a vowel, we're going to skip, all right? And in the end, we're gonna print a new letter. So before we start, let's see how we're going to get the user input. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in, we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal. The user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will start Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. Now that we understood how it works, let's start implementing here in our code, okay? So I'm gonna create a variable here, answer, and this answer will store whatever the user will type in, all right? And we're gonna use the function input. What will be the message we're gonna put in here? I'm gonna use the same message that they give us in this example, that is input colon, all right? So I'm gonna use here input colon, okay? And let's see if it's working. So if I put here python uh, twitter, dot py it's going to output this input all right and i'm gonna put here twitter and nothing will happen all right so for so far so good now let's start creating the output so let's start creating this first part of uh showing output colon all right so how are we gonna do this we're gonna use a print okay and if we do this way and if we print something else later for example the letter a Let's see what happens, all right? If we do this way, here I'm gonna put name, we're going to say output, and in another line, we're gonna say A, all right? So how can we put everything in the same line? That is how they are expecting us to receive. We're going to use here something that is called and equals to quotation mark. And this will avoid the default case of the print function that is going to a new line, creating a new line every time we use print, all right? So let's see how it works. If we do here Python, and I put here name, whatever, now we see that we have output and in the same line we have the letter A, all right? So this and quotation mark avoid going to a new line, okay? So far so good. Now let's see how can we loop through every letter in our string. Let's see how it works. One way to iterate over a string is to use for item in string. The variable item receives the character directly, so you do not have to use the index. For example, if we have a variable s that holds the value bus, and we want to print all the letters of the string each at a time, we do s equals to bus for char in s, print char. The word letter can be replaced by any other word or letter you desire. The main idea is that this loop will give you every character at every iteration of the variable s. So like we can see in here, after this for loop, we're printing every letter in a different line. So now that we saw how it works, let's just start implementing. So we're gonna do for, okay. I'm gonna use the, the, the name of our interactive variable will be letter, okay in and the name of our string so our string is answer all right so let's see what happens if i just print letter if we just print letter here we're going to see the following we're gonna see twitter for example 
and we're gonna print every letter in every iteration all right so this is working this is good this is working now we need to check if it's a vowel or not so how can we do this let's first understand how if and else condition works Python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs. An if and else Python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false. If a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is storing the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. A Python elif statement checks for another condition if all preceding conditions are not 